Um, hello, everyone. Um, so this is a panel about um, the blockchain and the free software community. How does the blockchain fit into the free software community? Um, I have been hosting this panel at a few other conferences uh, with some interesting uh, results and discussions, and I hope we're going to have an interesting discussion here. Um, the basic idea is the question, um, at least last year when I started this, um, blockchain was very, very much hyped and very much dominated by coins and tokens and people trying to make money, and it seemed really at odds with what the free software community is standing for. And so I was starting to ask the question, what's, what's going on here? This is coming out of the free software community in some form. It's using open source free software code uh, for the most part. And uh, everybody's saying it should be using free software and open source code um, for different reasons that we'll talk about. And so I started to um, organize meetups and these discussions in order to find out more about uh, what's going on and what's the, what's the reason uh, for the state that uh, the things we're in. So quickly introduce the, the, the panelists. Uh, um, so you have already heard them um, talk. Um, so we have uh, Stefan Bayer um, from, sorry, what was your uh, company name again? From Cryptomics. Um, we have um, Ahmad, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Ahmad. Um, from uh, Gitcoin, uh, we have Saptak, uh, sorry, sorry, Saptak from Gitcoin and Amod from uh, Mozilla and uh, Jolin. Okay. I'm going to start off the, the questions. Um, sorry, uh, where's my list here? Uh, Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start off. The first question is basically, why are you using blockchain in a project? And uh, what, how did you get started with that? Okay, so, well, I'm not actually using blockchain in a project. I'm, I'm sort of a consultant, and um, I look at a lot of blockchain projects, you know, other people's projects. Uh, how did I get started with blockchain? Well, I I'm, I'm come from a distributed systems background, and... Uh, you know, we, we were already working on consensus protocols and uh, fault tolerance, replicated databases back in the early 2000s. Well, pe people were working on that much earlier, but I was in the early 2000s. So, so it's just a natural co continuation of my earlier research. Yeah, so my project, basically Gitcoin, it started off more as an open source project. So all like including my CEO, me and most of the other teammates, we have been involved in open source for quite some time and we all knew that sustainability was a problem in open source. So we started off as solving sustainability problem in open source and blockchain seemed like a good uh, way of doing that because anyways blockchain allowed you, like I said, as a technical stack it allows us to change the transactional state or a programmatic change into financial prop financial rewards, right? So that's why we felt that blockchain is a good way of solving the sustainability problem in open source. So that's how we started off with blockchain. And our application basically is open source in itself as well. So Gitcoin, if you go to GitHub, you will see that it's the source code is basically open source. And it's the platform mostly is a centralized Django application, but then we use blockchain for the stakeholding parts and the funding process. So yeah, that's how we got started. So regarding me, you may say me as a blockchain enthusiast because being an open source developer, I must be open to all the technologies and since blockchain and machine learning, those are very much booming technologies. So if I want to succeed myself or if I want to take my knowledge further, then definitely having a no in this technology or having a know-how in this technology is uh, really uh, important for me. 
So having this blockchain and relating it to the various industries, like I had been working in the, in the uh, insurance, in the healthcare, in the media advertising as well. So basically, what are the problems in those industries and how exactly blockchain can leverage the security in those? That is one of the major concern. And if we can enhance more security in it, then that will be a really great option to do so. So yes, blockchain uh, can be used as a security. And basically, my personal experience with it is very, really good. Basically, if we can implement our existing know-how, because blockchain, as I said, that uh, it's a concept. Uh, and that can be implemented with the existing architecture, be it cloud or be it the infrastructure, uh, to leverage or to make the existing architecture even more efficient than what exactly it is now. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Joran. Uh, personally, I'm using blockchain for research projects uh, for a couple of years. Um, then I founded Frochain, an open source project, uh, last year in Singapore. And I believe that the blockchain technology can benefit the Internet of Things industry for uh, many areas, such as the data trust, uh, the security, and the security. Okay. Um, so how do you see in, in your work um, the relationship between blockchain and free software? Yeah, well, m most of the projects I see, I, I see are, are actually open source. Um, they do want to make money, so though often there are ICOs involved, and, and you know, you, you mentioned there's a bit of a conflict, but, but you, you might see it this way, but, uh, but, but they're generally open source. Um, in terms of, I look at this also from a cybersecurity point of view, and and you know I'm a smart contract auditor, and and I think it's it's uh, essential. These projects should all be open source, from a security point of view, uh, and also from you know we're placing our trust in these protocols and projects. Uh, we are eliminating third parties um, with a protocol, so we have to be able to to see what this protocol does. So, yeah, I think most projects are actually open source and, and they should be. Yeah, so I'll talk about, so when we say free software, like we all know, it's not really about that it's not supposed to be any talk about money, right? So it's more about the freedom, right? So it's about distribution, it's about the decentralization of everything, it's about people working from different parts of the world. And that's kind of the underlying thing of blockchain as well, the idea itself, the concept itself comes from the decentralization of the things. So I like seeing blockchain more like from a decentralization perspective than a security perspective. So I guess uh, the underlying principles are very similar. So though it's about money and then open source, we say free, but it's more about freedom than, main, though many people think that open source means that it has to be free, but it doesn't necessarily need to be free. It's more about the freedom of the things. So I guess they are kind of connected in that way that they have similar kind of principles. It's just that um, many of the open source people, I feel that it's kind of like marketed in a very wrong way or told in a wrong way by many people because since mostly when we talk about blockchain, the thing that comes to our mind is cryptocurrencies or tokens rather than it being a technology stack solving maybe IoT problems or maybe sustainability problems. So I guess that's why it's thought of as like not so open source friendly, but I guess at the end of the day, most of the blockchain projects are also open source. And so yeah, those are pretty good connected in between. Uh, I would like to see this blockchain from a bit noble perspective because the reason being I belong to a country where agriculture is the primary occupation and still the farmers are committing suicide because they are not able to pay their debts. And the main reason for this is being they are being cheated or they are being fooled on by their landlords that the debts are still remaining whereas they already created. So imagine in such a, a kind of country where uh, maybe in agriculture, maybe insurance or maybe healthcare and the, these sectors have a lot of people surrounding it. So in that case, if you're not able to build a trust over here, then uh, those uh, administration becomes absolutely futile. And uh, having a 
leveraging technology like blockchain, which can inbuilt have a, a, a trust factor in it, a secure factor in it, then uh, we can be able to have the basics or the at least the primary occupation of the country uh, being leveraged to a very secure and a trusted channel. So yes, blockchain, uh, it, it, first of all, it should be open source because that will cater to a wide variety of the developers, the uh, especially the end users, and it will help them making a life a bit a bit more simpler than uh, what it is now. Rather, in, in many cases, in many rural areas where people are not able to actually uh, leverage these technologies or harness these technologies, uh, at least this uh, blockchain can help uh, getting a next step or a step ahead than what it is now. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I think the problem is people join the blockchain ecosystem uh, for rewards. Uh, they want to be rich. Uh, actually, most of them become millionaires due to mining Bitcoins and Ethereum. So from my own perspective, is that to running a sustainable open source project, we really need a platform such as Gitcoin. It's because the GitHub is a open source a community platform for managing open source projects. But we actually need a platform uh, as Gitcoin to running a good bounty programs because a good bounty program help us to build a sustainable blockchain ecosystem. But I, I think people join any blockchain open source project for rewards and, and not really wish to country the uh, open source projects. Uh, we use Solidity, the smart contract of Ethereum, to write the apps. But actually, we didn't check out the source code for Ethereum and make any contributions. All right. Um, let's get a little bit more technical. Um, how do you specifically use uh, um, existing free software and open source in your project or in your work um, with the projects that you're working with? Okay, so well, from my point of view, there are two things. When, when I audit a project, I, I obviously use free software, free open source software uh, for all the tooling, you know, starting from the text editor and, and the static analytics tool tools but um, in general you know all these projects that they're built on free open source um, you know if you build on the Ethereum platform you, you're using a lot of tools and, and the actual protocol which is open sourced uh, and, and in, in general I think in, in any type of software it's, it's very difficult to develop these days without using open source uh, you know the APIs that you use to access uh, the platforms that they're generally open source, the, the, the front end libraries, uh, everything. So, yeah, if that answers the questions, it, it, I see it everywhere. Yeah, true. I agree with Stephen, right? For example, with Gitcoin, like most of the blockchain projects, if it's not just a white paper or a token or a smart contract which has just been written out there for someone to use someday or a token which just says that this token is built on this principle and it's actually practical, it does nothing apart from people buying it and stuff. So if you're actually making a project, a blockchain project where you can use the blockchain technology, it has to have some kind of application, right? Even for as simple as making your browser blockchain enabled or web chain enabled as we say we use a project called metamask which uses chrome extensions or mozilla extensions which are written in javascript which is again open source project right we in gitcoin the entire gitcoin is written in django so django is an open source project we use jquery in front end so jquery is again an open source project then we use Linux servers for deployment of the entire Gitcoin platform, which is again an open source project. So when you finally create a project out of it where you're using the blockchain anyway, so you will definitely more or less use open source project. Like I was saying in my slides, like even the closed source companies that we have kind of directly or indirectly would be using open source projects for making their application, so as to say. So it's not like that if you are a blockchain application, you are going to avoid or not use open source projects, you're definitely going to use open source projects. And most of the 
blockchain projects that are there use some kind of React or Django or some kind of language to build a platform that where you can go and use the blockchain in itself, right? So which is written in some kind of open source project and probably deployed in a Linux server or it's an Android application. So it has open source involved in it anyways, right? Uh, to take this discussion forward, uh, as uh, Saptak had already mentioned in his previous talk that whether we know what is open source or whether we don't know what is open source, but we definitely use open source without being realizing. So because we are, whether it, whatever our project we are working in, we are surrounded by these technologies that we inherently or implicitly uh, definitely uh, use, use them. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm a Java developer. So uh, I've definitely used all the APIs and everything. And also I'm uh, into machine learning. So basically the technologies like TensorFlow and all the uh, OpenCV, et cetera. So I'm using those to basically create something like object detection and image recognition, et cetera. So yes, uh, I use open source widely and uh, in definitely in support of it. We are using open source projects such as uh, Node.js, uh, Fiat tools. Uh, especially, I think the most important part of the open source ecosystem is the community. So as uh, mentioned a couple minutes ago, I think the most important thing is to, to bring people, to bring open source developers into our projects. But actually, uh, we cannot make until now because of um, many people join the blockchain ecosystem uh, for mining coins and not really to contrib contribute their uh, open source comments. And even they didn't express their interest in contributing any blockchain uh, open source projects. So I think the major problem is it, 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 the culture of the uh, blockchain ecosystem, not really the, the problem of the open source project itself. <laughs> the, the last question was, um, how do you use FOSS in your project? And since you don't have a project, uh, um, we can jump straight to the next question. And that one was not on the list. Uh, um, so uh, based on what you just said about uh, people joining the projects for mining, um, and so I would like to ask now in the in the Last year, there has been a lot of change in the perception of uh, um, blockchain and, and Bitcoin um, because of the value drop and so on. So I would like to ask, do you see a change in the perception of the projects or in the attitude of the, um, the developers or creators of the projects? Uh, um, in the last year, um, or do you see a change in the future? What What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, tr tricky question. Uh, I, I don't think there is a big change in attitude. Uh, I mean, projects generally want to make money and get funded. That, that's you know, when you cr create a company and you decide to do something based on blockchain or otherwise, you, you need funding usually, and. Um, last couple of years we've seen everyone do an ICO because that was the easiest way to get money. So you do crowdfunding. Um, before that, startups went to, to venture capital. Now they're either going back to venture capital or they talk about a security token offering. Um, but, but in the end, the goal is to, to fund the development. Um, you know, that might be at odds with some of the free open source principles, but, but a lot of these projects are about startups and, and making money. So I, I don't think that has changed, and I don't think that's likely to change soon. Obviously, there's also a lot of misconceptions on, you know, cryptocurrencies, tokens, and uh, what, what is Bitcoin, and, and what does it have to do with blockchain. But, but you know, that, that, that's slightly related only. Yeah, I completely agree. Like most of the startup projects, um, so it will be needing some kind of funding. And based on what happened, like the last few months, which which we are like calling the crypto winter kind of a thing, where everything is going down and stuff. So maybe there are not many mil billionaires who can like just throw away money to any of the blockchain project that's coming up. So many of the companies, the people who throw away the money of blockchain 
are kind of thinking more consciously, okay, whether we should be funding this project or not. But I guess, uh, in a way, it's going to reduce the amount of people who thought just like, so it's just good and bad parts. The bad part is obviously maybe many of the good projects might now need other ways of getting funding and stuff. But a good part is also that many people who just thought of it as a investment plan for their future. So many people will now be using blockchain, I guess, more like a technology stack rather than just an investment plan of like holding what we call in blockchain, right? We just hold little coins, right? Like we buy Ethereum and keep it and hope that it goes up and then it's our retirement plan or so as to say. But now maybe we will be more like biddling on blockchain, which is like using the technology stack and trying to make more of stuffs out of blockchain and use it in a practical applications rather than just thinking of it as a money source. Uh, this question basically reminded me of one of my incidents. So uh, when I basically heard this word Bitcoin for the first time and I went to ask few of my fellow developers that what exactly it is, anyone knows about it. So one answer I received is like, no, Bit Bitcoin is or cryptocurrency is something which talk people use, it's none of our concern. So what I mean to say is that it, blockchain or these uh, technologies will take some time to sink in. So it, it just like our internet, when it was launched around it, when it came into being around 25 years ago, it did not become or it did not become famous at the first month or the first year. It basically through various applications or through various uh, web apps, basically it went uh, to the developers and went to the end users. So it depends on our enthusiasm that how exactly we want to uh, dive deep into a particular concept and how exactly we would allow ourselves to research on these uh, further in this aspect. So even though having a variety of usage, unless and until we are giving the end users a, a confirmation that yes, or the trusted applications or more secure applications can be built using blockchain. And if you're not able to de develop a pro prototype or develop a, a sample application for them, uh, which actually will benefit them, then uh, only it will be possible for uh, a developer or a contributor to enhance or promote the advocacy of blockchain. Yeah. Uh, I I think uh, last year, the winter of cryptocurrency, people left the cryptocurrency market uh, because the price was very bad. But they, uh, they believed that the market beer was gone by this couple of months and then come back to the crypto market for next trends to make more money, not really uh, expect to use the blockchain technologies. So uh, for me, I didn't see any changes as well. Was the question cryptocurrencies, blockchains, or distributed ledgers generally? <laughs> Which level are you asking? Blockchains generally, for example? Yeah, so I'd, I, I'm not terribly fussed either way about the uh, sort of changing fortunes of people who uh, pump up, pursue, or burst bubbles. That seems a spectacularly unimportant. Um, it does create short-term problems, sure. We've seen that before. Um, what I think, so, so firstly I point out that, that cryptocurrencies are only a subset of blockchains, albeit currently a fairly large subset, but Hyperledger has been sort of grinding away on, on other uh, problems that don't have anything at all along the lines of cryptocurrency. I'm not yet convinced either way that they're good ideas, but they're largely unaffected. So it's, it is strictly cryptocurrencies that have been sort of subject to this bubble bursting uh, type behavior. Um, I have finally allowed myself to become an advisor to a, uh, a blockchain company. Um, what appealed to me in them was that they are from the outset running a business meaning organizing people and systems and resources to deliver something of value to customers who give you money. Not investors, not speculators, not VCs, not whatever, but customers, someone who's receiving the thing that you are producing and paying you for it. Uh, what I'd suggest that the cryptocurrency winter will do is allow resources to shift back to companies, founders, developers, GPU supply, which has been an actual issue, uh, to move back to other th things that are actually more valuable. And so in that respect, I would say it's a sort of gradual improvement, but yeah, not a gigantic effect. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I'd like to uh, dig deeper into exactly what you just said. Uh, um, so the, the cryptocurrencies are the ones are that are losing, uh, um, whereas the rest um, stays the same. Is that, but I'd like to ask everybody else, do you really think that is the case or are other projects that are not cryptocurrency focused um, suffering from the, the down hype, so to speak, um, from the negative uh, publicity that is coming now, or not? What is your thought on that? Um, I'm not entirely sure. That there are two aspects to this. Um, um, first of all, obviously, it, if you wanted to start a project now based on blockchain, it'd be a harder sell to the general public. Mm, but on the other hand, it might also be you know, I think we see a lot of really poor projects that have disappeared, and, and we, we, we get better quality projects now. So, yeah, uh, cryptocurrencies have been affected, uh, startups have been affected, um, but not, not only in a bad way, you know. Yeah, so means I agree with him that many of the projects which like many of the projects have faded away as such and many of the good projects have stayed back. But I do agree with Roland as he said, like I don't believe personally and it's nothing to do with my company company's opinion, but I don't believe that blockchain solves everything. It's not like that unified string theory kind of a thing that solves all the problems, right? So it's not like that every time there is something, okay, I have to make it in blockchain. It's not like that. You don't use PostgreSQL for all your databases. You don't write JavaScript in your backend all the time. So it's similarly blockchain. You don't use blockchain for any problem that is thrown to you. So I don't believe in the blockchain everything principle that many of the blockchain ecosystem people believe in, right? So there is always projects which have a particular thing that should be used. There are applications, I believe, where blockchain helps, maybe in trust applications and stuff like that. But it's, and I believe those projects will still stay because that's a technical, st there, there it has been used as particularly an uh, application which has the features that are needed for the trust improvement and not like uh, just for using of money. Similarly in Gitcoin, uh, we didn't really see, but we, my, like I at least hoped that me like not hoped, but I thought that maybe uh, because of this crypto winter, people might have a negative feeling of earning in form of blockchain because we are but like finally funding the projects in the form of ERC20 tokens. So it might not have been as attractive of earning in Ethereum as it was one year back or like two years back than it is now. But we didn't really see a massive change in that way that contributors are no longer contributing to the projects because it's in blockchain, uh, which is a good thing. Like, I thought maybe that would happen, but that didn't happen. And yeah, it's like, so for me, it's not new, right? Because for me, like I work in a US based company, so I earn in US dollars and which gets converted to Indian rupees. So <laughs> I have always faced this US dollar and Indian rupees values going up and down, up and down, up and down. So <laughs> it's very similar to that if I think of it, right? It's very kind of similar to that. It might blocked in the currencies might again go up and people might again come back to it and all the stuff. But it's practically to be used where it's supposed to be used and not just thrown away everywhere. So I guess all those projects and many of the projects I've seen in the ecosystem are using blockchain. So they're like, okay, I have a lot of Ethereum lying about, what do I do? I will make a project in a particular marketplace which I don't even know about how the marketplace works. So this is something I've seen again and again happening. And this kind of projects would have anyways gone down whether it, the crypto window came or didn't come, right? So I guess, yeah, so whichever projects use blockchain because blockchain made sense in using in that project, I guess they will still stay because they are not really dependent on the cryptocurrency aspect of it, right? 
I might have a bit different opinion about it. So basically from whatever I have analyzed or whatever I have kind of researched about it, I somewhere feel that cryptocurrency might be the future. So if any technology or if any organization is not adopting cryptocurrency now, then they will have to do it sometime later. So it, it is uh, beneficial to have a bit open-minded in that case that uh, since if, uh, even though right now I'm not using a technology, but if it can be the future, then in that case I should be ready enough to extend my current uh, architecture to incorporate the technology as well. Okay, okay I don't know. It, it's a hard topic for me. But, um, you know, many of my friends uh, in Asia, they create startups because the blockchain technology is a hot topic, uh, meaning it's a fashion. Because for Entrepreneurs who create startup doing project companies, they can stand, uh, they can sit like here, uh, give uh, presentations, and running. Uh, they they were writing lots of white papers, and they were running the road shows around the world. So they feel such things are very fashion. So I don't know. It would be a bit speculative for me. I, I, would, I said that the you know, other applications are sometimes a bit questionable. Um, and yes, a good fraction of those are probably, I was going to say, sort of a halo effect because of cryptocurrencies. But, but fashion is, is as accurate a way to describe the problem, that people are doing stuff, both startups, well, startups and corporates and maybe even regulators, um, are getting involved in uh, blockchain projects which in situations that really don't warrant it and often because I suspect that it's fashionable or in the startup case there's a sort of halo effect because hey you know blockchains are cool so invest in my startup um, so yes maybe there's an amount of that dropping I, I can't quantify it but it wouldn't be it wouldn't surprise me there, there are places where the, the benefit is not necessarily obvious so I'd point to the um, MAS running a a blockchain trial for clearing with, between the central bank and the, the local banks, the problem they're solving is SWIFT. <laughs> SWIFT is appallingly awful. It's sort of 1960s era EDI uh, today, just sort of encapsulated in JSON. Uh, so there are certainly, there's certainly scope to improve some of those ancient systems. But um, yeah, is it the right technique and do you need to? And is the tendency to do it being pushed too far forward over the last couple of years because of the, the ascent of cryptocurrencies and therefore are they starting to recede? Speculatively, yes, but I don't have concrete evidence. Let's sort of wait and see. Um, I want to open the space for, for also for questions for the audience. Um, so that means we're going to continue talking, but if you have a question, uh, um, please uh, raise your hand and then you can uh, join the discussion. Um, or if you have any, any uh, opinion to what we're talking about, uh, um, please uh, raise your hand and, uh, um, yeah, you want to say something right now? Uh, yeah, so, so I've been, wait, 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 wait. everybody's racing, okay, I'll take from Rastra. Pass, just okay. pass that around to whoever has right. a question. No Here we go. Okay, Th thanks. Uh, so, so I've been in a startup accelerator for the past several months, and we've had um, presentations by partners from Sequoia, Golden Gate Ventures, Founders Fund, and the consensus has always been that blockchain is cancer, and that startups that can't explain how their business process is dependent upon having a blockchain probably haven't thought about how, without they can't explain how their business processes are improved by the blockchain, probably haven't thought it out too hard. And that's had a kind of a knock-on effect in the companies that people are starting, in this accelerator at least. And I see people that are doing fractionalization projects without using blockchain, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, and I, I'm wondering if, if you all have seen that yet, or, um, or if you see uh, people changing their projects away from blockchain. Um, and just going back to what you were saying before, like delivering business value um, for the company or the investors. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's a it's actual stigma. You're, you're not seeing just a lack of halo. You're seeing an actual stigma. Yeah, and the cancer part. I didn't say that. Like one of the one of the partners over there. That's what, that was their words for it. So. <laughs> okay. Well, now we have some data. Yeah, so I kind of want to t talk about it in a way, like Roland also said, right, the hello effect, right? So it's, I am not sure about the cancer part, means, <laughs> yeah, but um, to be fair, before blockchain, it was a similar scenario with machine learning and AI, right? So any startup which said that we are using machine learning and AI, if, even if it was like three if loop, if conditions, if else if, if else if, and you say I have used a machine learning project, I made an AI, or you just wrote a regex and it gives a chatbot and you say it's an AI assistant system, you are probably gonna get funding from some big VC and stuff, right? So that's, I feel has always been, before that I guess it was cloud, then it came to machine learning AI, now it's blockchain, and surely something new is gonna come again after some time because crypto winter is already here. So that hello effect is kind of always there in startups and everywhere, right? So I like to call them keywords. So it's like in keywords, you use these keywords to get funding out of it. So many of the projects do use that. It's not like there are no other alternatives of doing something which you can do with blockchain, right? There are always different other alternatives and you should be considering different ways of doing things. And it's so, yeah, many of the projects I believe do that just to get the funding part of it or because it's trendy, but not because it's actually needed in the project. So that is there and I have seen that happen in the ecosystem again and again. Yeah, so that's true. But I am not sure I would go ahead to call it a cancer, but <laughs> yeah, I hope that answers your question to some extent. Uh, so just to uh, one point to add to is so regarding blockchain I'm not sure that might be the case because blockchain itself is an expensive technology that we cannot use in just for show off and without any purpose and as far as the startup is concerned if there is any heavenly investor who just is ready to fund uh, fund the startup without knowing what exactly they are going to do with the funding then that 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 would be the best case, but I don't think an in investor would do that. So especially having the uh, incorporating a technology like blockchain without having any materialistic use of it would be would not be that uh, often scenario. Okay. Um, so to, to, to latch on to that, um, you said, uh, uh, somebody here said uh, uh, blockchain winter and uh, you say blockchain is uh, cancer. Um, um, do you think the blockchain winter is helping us to fight the blockchain cancer or um, is it making it worse? Anybody want to jump to this question? Well, in the ecosystem, we are saying that the crypto spring is coming, unlike Game of Thrones winter is coming, but <laughs> I'm not sure how long this winter la runs, la unlike in Game of Thrones. <laughs> but um, I don't know, like I said, like this surely clears out a lot of the noise, right? So I would say that because of the winter, it would clear out a lot of the noise, and many of the projects that remain would actually be good projects like he said that many of the projects which actually need blockchain would still be there because they need it for the technology itself they don't need it because it was a money making machine for them right so in that way i would say that crypto winter to some extent acts as that apocalypse thing that we all often have the reset button that the mother nature uses sometimes to cleanse the earth so maybe it's something like that <laughs> where we can be like, okay, the crypto winter kind of clears out all the noises and all the pollutions that we had in the blockchain ecosystem. And all the good things that were there for the project itself stays on. So, yeah, I feel that it might have some effect in fighting the cancer, but yeah. Okay. So, you know, occasionally Gartner comes up with something useful. Um, the, the thing I'd point to at the moment in this case is the Gartner hype cycle. There's a curve that looks sort of like this, where you've got you know, initial excitement, uh, over-the-top expectations, the trough of disillusionment, and then a sort of gradual climb into normalization. And then I'd suggest the, the 
the crypto winter is just the trough of disillusionment for this particular category of technology. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I feel the same like the graph. I think now we will, we are at the normalization, just climbing up the normalization uh, graph of it. Uh, since the Linux Foundation has come in and they are coming up with Hyperledger and some of the R3 Codra who are um, forming a financial uh, consortium. Uh, to um, customize the blockchain solution to fit into the enterprise needs. And I really, I think now the enterprises are looking into it and uh, seeing how this can be adopted. Definitely the public blockchain uh, is not uh, suitable for the enterprises to take it up straight away. I think there is already a customization of the blockchain is going on. A uh, few uh, high-level uh, things I would see is uh, the business-to-business -business interface uh, interfacing framework. I think that's where I'm seeing blockchain is going towards, where uh, it can uh, form like a business-to-business -business, uh, integration framework. On the other side, some sharing of information across the industry. Uh, I think there are already projects on the KYC sharings where you have already uh, KYC information is verified by someone, and all the banks doesn't need to do the same work again, so they wanted to share the information. They're already finding out some real use cases of it. And there is one more area on the independent currencies uh, for an ecosystem. For example, the food industries or the transport industries, they can come up with their own currencies to uh, use it across the different things, but I uh, something related to the loyalty points, where in now in the King, uh, King, King's Flyer is already going into the blockchain to exchange the loyalty points to other loyalty uh, systems where they can exchange the information. I think there's already um, the industry use cases are coming in, some serious investments are going on on the blockchain. Uh, so one thing, uh, I really feel it's like whether uh, there is a uh, value proportion has been rightly found out or not. There is, uh, these are all the use cases which could be achieved by different technologies and different ways that we are doing now. Whether the blockchain can provide that value proportion instead of doing it the uh, other way, like uh, distributor technology, or whether the blockchain can provide the value proportion um, it's for the real question, I believe. I'd, I'd suggest that um, the, I forget his name, the IBM speaker on uh, Thursday laid out uh, there's either six or eight criteria for identifying projects that were candidates for blockchains. Now, generally, this is hyperledger based, but it, it's, the thinking was broader than that. And I think that sort of is a more thoroughly spelled out variant of what you're saying. Um, do, if you don't tick at least these six boxes, then you know, give up now, you're almost certainly better off with a trustee who's, in, who's trusted or bonded or in some other way constrained to become trustworthy. Um, only once you've got a situation where provably all six don't apply, then yes, it starts to make sense to look at a, a blockchain and at that point, uh, either the running costs or the risks drop to the point where there's, a, there's economic value being created, and yes, then the parties can argue about <laughs> who should get how much of the newly created pie. So I, it's happening. It's good to see. Yeah, I think there's a, a big difference between the practice and the theory. In theory, blockchain can bring a lot to, to these sort of enterprise networks you described. Um, and, and there's a lot of adoption, and, and there, there are two types of adoptions. There, there are companies and, and enterprise networks that, that sort of get on the bandwagon as well and, and really don't know what to use it for and you know, sort of force the issue. 
uh, but but there's some really good ideas and and you know um, if you look at supply chain for example the theory of of what the the blockchain can do to pick supply chain is 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 very clear you know everyone agrees of the advantages but then you see companies trying to implement this and and you know you've seen the, there's a big use case with IBM and Musk for international shipping I think which you know it's surprisingly difficult to to actually get to work in practice and and for a number of reasons you know, one it's difficult to get anyone everyone to agree on, on the common protocol and to get everyone involved and and second we, we just don't know how to do these things properly and and um, there are a lot of proof of concepts uh, uh, being presented as successes and and i don't think they are all such successful um, examples um, so again with all new technology you know you have to be careful um, what works and what doesn't and, and things that might look like a really good idea don't actually work in practice and the other way around you know some some things that are a bad idea really take off you know that, that always happens So, yeah, I means I would also agree. It's not about exactly, I feel that it's not more about the industry or particular places where we can apply. It's more about the reason why you, where you're using the blockchain, right? Like you said, the six boxes that you need to tick. So this is, I would tell an experience I had in a hackathon where I was mentoring in blockchain. So one of the projects one a group did was like about investigation report filing in theft. So what they said is like, and the application that they made was because there have been theft reports or investigation reports for other reasons which have been manipulated by the police or someone like that, right? And they made a project, to be very simple, it's, it was built on blockchain and to ensure that any kind of manipulation becomes a transaction and the transaction is openly visible to everyone. So anyone who makes a transactional change to the investigation report that was filed, basically it can be tracked back to whoever made the changes. So I can kind of understand the use of blockchain over there because it's, it's you're ticking some of the boxes, right? But then another project, it basically was like, okay, we are using RSA encryption, but since everyone says blockchain is more secure, so we will be using blockchain. Now, that's somewhere where my question is, because finally the encryption algorithms that are used in RSA or in blockchain are kind of similar, right? So the underlying cryptography is more or less similar, but many people would be used to make it secure just because it has been trendy that blockchain makes everything more secure. So I guess the reason why you're using blockchain also plays an important role in wherever the project you're using blockchain itself. So we have less than 10 minutes left. So I want to bring the topic back to free software and open source and uh, ask you um, how can the free software community benefit from a blockchain uh, work now. A year ago we would have said um, there's a lot of money in blockchain so we can use it to fund uh, a free software development. Um, so that's changing. So what is left or what, what are the, the benefits now? Well, it, it has changed in a way that um, ICOs are not as successful anymore. But, you know, it's still a way of doing funding in, in sort of a decentralized or democratic way you know you can you can actually get a project funded somehow um, using smart contract based crowdfunding you, you can call it an ICO an STO or whatever you can still do that and 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 get get funding and, and it's different funding you know it's, it's funding anyone can participate and um, in most countries in, in some countries it, you have to be accredited investor but but it's still possible and obviously then there are projects such as gitcoin which um, you know which, which, which sort of take this open this up much more i mean you 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 you're probably more qualified to talk about this but the way i see it it's 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 a bit like a, 
an ever open ICO where you can just ask for money in, in any way you want and, and, and get projects funded. So, yeah. yeah, so I, I also feel that like, um, like the thing is we never talk like this about other projects, right? Like we don't say, so yeah, Python, is Python still important in open source or like C is important in open source? So I guess in similar ways, we shouldn't be saying about why blockchain is important in open source, so as to say. So I would say that it still uses, uh, like it can be used variedly in different projects if it needs to be used, if the application asks for the use of it. And also blockchain enables you still, it like you can, maybe the money factor isn't big, but the important part about blockchain, it helps, helps you to programmatically, like put a financial benefit to the programmatic transaction of any kind, which is where Gitcoin is also using blockchain, right? So like we kind of change our state of an open source issue and pull request is what we decide as a blockchain transaction, right? So if someone's starting work on an issue to someone sending a pull request or the pull request getting merged, now this can be tracked as a transaction states, different transaction states, and then the final financial benefits comes out of it. So there are different ways how it comes. It's not basically like just about the money thing or the value of a particular coin going up or down, I feel. According to me, blockchain is more of a, with respect to the free and open source communities, blockchain is more of the things which they need to implement it in order to make their system even better secure. Because as we know, we were aware of decentralization, we were aware of the uh, uh, encryption and other technologies, but putting it all together is something blockchain, I, I would su suggest. So it's like using whatever resources we are having and a technology which you want to adapt to uh, in, a more manage, in a more managed or in a more efficient way without uh, without with ensuring that none of these resources go futile. That is what the open source communities need to focus on. Okay, yeah, uh, from a high level view, the open source developers uh, can get benefits from ICO and other open source mining. Uh, especially we can use uh, tools such as Solidity to issue our own cryptocurrency, uh, issue our own tokens. And there are other many cryptocurrency platforms, except Ethereum, for such purpose. So I, I think it, it, it's very different from about 10 years ago. Open source developers can only get funds from traditional investors and big, uh, big funds. Uh, but it's quite different. Now you can get small money, I mean, meaning start money to fund companies. Uh, from crypto funds and other individual crypto investors. So I think this is a uh, very good news for open source developers. Um, that's a bit philosophical, but I suspect there are some, some broad trends. One is, yeah, get past the, the crypto winter and normalize a bit, stabilize a bit what's happening with cryptocurrencies and they become more broadly applicable as a means of direct payment for engineering effort, the Gitcoin type stuff. Uh, the second is that as we sort of climb this sort of latter curve of, of normalization for blockchain, blockchains generally, it means that the demand for engineering talent stabilizes and grows along with it. And that is an opportunity. It requires a slightly different engagement to engage with individuals, but it, it's an opportunity in the sense that um, the people there working on things that are infrastructure, companies in that situation have a recruiting need, and got it. Uh, the tech companies have been able to recruit if they are allowing their developers to contribute meaningfully to open source and free software. Um, and I have forgotten the third thing. There was a third one but it's gone, so <laughs> I'll stop at two. We're down to one minute. So since we're out of time, basically, um, does anybody have any last words that they want to add? Um, or any, any comments from the audience?
Uh, does anybody have any comments about uh, using blockchain for increasing governance inside of corporations and banks and how that can be used for, you know, the GES scores of a company? I mean, I've just heard anecdotally that, like, people are being offered, um, you know, blockchain projects to basically use smart contracts to cut out a bunch of analysts inside their company. But. Yeah. Okay, I don't think we have time to answer that uh, question now, but that's a, that's a bigger question we can uh, discuss out on the hallway. So, um, okay, uh, what's left to say is thank you for coming and uh, thank you for engaging with us. And uh, I hope uh, we uh, gave you an engaging uh, discussion. And I hope we, uh, you were able to take something away from, from this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.